Welcome, welcome back to another piano lesson with Warren. My name is Warren McPherson. If you're new to the channel, today we're going to take a look at some worship chords, worship piano, stuff that you can play for altar call or when you're just trying to set a sort of ambient mood, right? Some easy chords that whether you're a beginner, intermediate, you're going to be able to learn these chords fairly quickly and then this is something you can use during service all right so don't go away we're going to break that down when we get back stay tuned all right welcome back now let's take a look at these chords that we can use during altar call or just any sort of time throughout the service that you want to create some form of ambient worship you know some people call it atmospheric whatever terminologies you want to use First, let's just check out the chords. Let's take a listen to the chord. So. Those are all the chords, right? You notice my left hand barely moved and you might see some big name chords flashing on, on, on the screen, but I'm gonna show you an easier way to think about it. First of all, we're play, playing in the key of C, right? I'm think about, thinking about this in the key of C major, even though you see me using black keys. So that's the first thing. Now, all I'm doing in my right hand, I'm starting off with an octave on the G, C, D. Right, so you can think of it as really just like a C sus4, or if we drop the G, it becomes a C sus2. So whichever way it's easier for you to think about it. So you can think about it as a C sus2 with just a G added down here, or you can think about it as a G sus4 with a G dupl duplicate at the top. So you just learned something today that a sus2 and a sus4 are interchangeably. Now, then I start with sort of a C octave down here. Octave with the fifth. So in this regards, it's really just a C sus2 because my bass is a C. But you know, you can think about it whichever way is easier for you. So it's not a major, it's not a minor, it's just a C sus2. Now, all I'm doing now, my left hand is moving down to the B flat and I'm still keeping that F. And then my right hand transitioned from that sus2 to just a C minor. So together it sounds like this. Woo! Now if you wanna name the full chord, basically Medicolous is saying it's a B flat six nine sus4. Right? I wouldn't try to think about it with those big numbers. Just think about it as a C minor in the right hand, you know, and this is gonna be in the second inversion C minor, and then just play a B flat octave with the fifth in the left hand. So then we have. Woo! Now I'm gonna keep my right hand the same, and I'm going to shift my left hand from this B flat octave down to this. So now I sort of have an A flat and I'm stretching up here to grab the nine or you can call it the two, right? If you were not able to do this stretch, you can just play, simply play an octave with the fifth. It's still gonna sound good, right? So then we have coming from here, keeping the right hand the same, now we have. Now I'm sort of reiterating, you see me playing the lower part of the chord just to get all the notes sounding. But I'm keeping my pinky on this G so it doesn't, it, it doesn't, um, sus, um, I'm not re replaying that G. I'm just keeping it sustained throughout the full thing, right? So just to play those three chords again, we've got the G sus, the C sus two. B flat six to nine sus four. And then we're going down. This is basically 
an A flat major nine chord. But again, you can just think about it as a C minor in the first inversion, in the second inversion, with this extended A flat, E flat, and the B flat up here, give you that nine sound. Now from here, again, I'm still keeping that C minor outline in my right hand, and I'm coming down here, and I'm playing an open F minor to spread. Again, if you're not able to do that, just play the triad version up here. It gives you the same sound. So now we have a C minor and second inversion in the right hand, and an F minor in the left hand. Together it forms a F minor nine chord. Now from here, I'm going down and I'm playing this D minor seven flat five. So it's just a D diminish with the seven. You'll often also hear this chord referred to as a half diminished chord, right? And I'm just keeping my C minor. And that's gonna give you some strange, strange name. I mean, look at that name being displayed by Medicolous. So I'm not even gonna to try to think about that. Just think about it as a C minor, second inversion in the right hand, D minor seven flat five in the left hand. Together, they sound pretty cool. And now from here, I'm gonna move up to, probably gonna play it up here. So now I'm just playing a shell G7, meaning there's no third in the left hand. So that would be a G7. If we drop the third, we'll just get a sort of a, a shell voicing of that over the C minor. <laughs> now if you want, you can go ahead and drop this index finger down to the B and it give you an altered G dominant flat 13 chord, right? So again, you take a G7 without the third in the left, C minor in second inversion, and then you just drop the root down to the B, and that's it. Back to the top. And then I move down. Woo! Give you that just nice sound. Again, if you can't do that, just and then one more time. Love it. Then you can start decorating it. Now, I'm not playing it in any specific timing. Mm. Now, it's important that you're changing your pedal every step of the way, so each chord's getting cleared. Now, so the sound that I'm using, I'm using a bunch of layers, and that's the beauty about this sort of altar call, atmospheric, worship-style piano, is if you can layer some sounds together, it's better. So I have right here a, a worship EP, I'm just looking at my stack, then I'm mixing that with a worship pad, then I got this sort of low energy thing down here, Now I'm also mixing that with regular strings, so you can hear the strings in the back, but then I have this tremolo going. So if you listen to the tremolo by itself, so it's a tremolo string. And that's what I got stacked up. All of those being played together layered. And I can change and play around with the different values to make some louder, some softer, right? Now, if you want to then now add some sort of rhythmic movement to this, you can introduce the piano. 
So now when I introduce the piano, everything sounds like this. So the piano allows you to then, you can start to floor. And then in that respect, I'm really now sort of messing around with the C minor scale, right? So some basic rhythm that you could do to start to uh, make the sound come alive a little bit or to take it to the next level is literally just start, to start arpeggiating the chords within their position that you're playing them. So right here, instead of now just holding it, you can start building little rhythm. Now, another important thing, look at my pedal being displayed at the screen. You can see where my pedal changes are, uh, are happening. And the reason why I'm changing the pedal that frequently is because every time you play the repeated note, the sound sort of starts to get bigger and bigger. So to maintain that volume, I'm, I'm fluffing that pedal, fluttering that pedal to get rid of old sound so it doesn't compound and just start to get too loud and muddy. So. So I'm just arpeggiating the chords in their position. Then I can go out with the improv now. Major. <laughs> so that's how you can layer to create that atmospheric worship piano altar call kind of vibe. See how I started with just those basic chords. And if you want to work on this, practice it that way. Just start blocking the chords with just pads. Don't think about timing. Don't think about rhythms yet. Once you get comfortable doing that, introduce a piano and then just start experimenting with experimenting with that arpeggiated vibe because when we're doing this sort of style of music and playing you're not accompanying a singer you're not even playing an actual song you're using chords and melodies and rhythms to create an atmosphere so 
it is heavily a creative process. So don't feel restrictive, don't feel like you need to be head air to a box and timing and specific rhythm. Once you get the chords down, follow the feel. See what's working, what's not working. And that's a great way of beginning to improve your worship piano chords. Now, if you like this tutorial, if you want more of this stuff, comment down below and let me know what you think about this tutorial. You enjoyed it? Great, let me know. And again, if you're new to the channel, please give us a like and a subscribe. Little things like that helps to keep the channel going and growing. And lastly, if you have not been to PianoLessonWithWarren.com yet, I would highly recommend you check it out. That's my membership program where I teach gospel piano by ear. And you learn chords, you learn songs, you, got, you get downloadable sheets and MIDI files and all that wonderful stuff. We have a wonderful creative community of gospel musicians and people on their journey to learning piano by ear from all over the world. It's a wonderful place. So if you've been struggling in your playing, you've been jumping from YouTube video to YouTube video, you're not making any progress, that's because you're lacking structure. And structure is what I offer over at PianoListWithWarren.com. All right, lastly, another thing I'm gonna mention is we have a free PDF that you can download. I call it the seven steps to naming any chord. Oftentimes you might find yourself doodling at the piano, you come up with a chord and you don't really know how to name it or to accurately put a name to the notes that you're playing. This PDF will walk you through seven steps of the things you need to go through to allow you to determine what the name of the chord is. So that's a, a, a free download. The link for that is in the description. All right. So until then, keep listening, keep singing, keep practicing, because this is how you'll continue to grow as a musician. See you next week for another tutorial. Bye for now and have a blessed week.